Hello and welcome to the second of our events exploring the importance of great user experience in enterprise software. Today we're looking at the importance of enterprise UX in elevating customer service experience. And my name is Andy Stevens. I'm the co-founder and director at Box Fusion Consulting. To start with some quick housekeeping, if you do have any questions as we go through the event today, please do drop them in the Q&A section. And then after the event, you'll be able to view a full recording of this event on our Box Fusion LinkedIn page. We have three speakers joining me today. Firstly, Dan Raper will give us a quick recap of the importance of UX as a concept in the customer service world. Then I'm gonna sit down with Jake Patterson to talk about some B2C service concepts. And finally, I have Melinda Eulen joining from Oracle to show us their Redwood service solution and how Oracle's approach to enterprise user experience looks for service teams. But what are the impacts of poor UX in the service space? As an agent, having to jump around into different applications to investigate an issue or find the required answer to go back to a customer with will likely lead to a delay in response, which we know is a critical factor in an end customer's experience. And in addition, that can also frustrate the human agent. For example, when an issue or incident is reported via email, ideally this is routed to the best specialist to handle that type of issue, and the specialist should have at their fingertips access to knowledge and support to help resolve that particular problem before quickly and easily being able to respond to the customer with a full resolution. But there are lots of steps along the way where friction may be introduced, and while email sent during working hours might be most common in the B2B service examples, the world of B2C in 2024, you'd expect a wide variance in terms of channel and time of inquiry, but also coupled with very high expectations, elevated expectations in terms of the standard of customer service or support. In addition, if the right people are not seeing things or if information provided by the customer is not easily accessible, then there will be downstream ripple effects in, in terms of the service that's being provided. It will not be accurate and the customer is likely to ultimately become frustrated. I'm sure we can all think of examples where we've had an issue with a product or a service and we've reported it, we've provided what we think is a very detailed explanation or maybe more background than we thought was necessary and yet the response that might come back ignores what we've said. This is a very frustrating experience and impacts heavily on how we perceive that brand. And we believe at Boggs Fusion and at Oracle that the heart of these issues is often a lack of consideration for user experience in terms of the software um, and the way it's been implemented. But with more care and attention to how people work and how the use of service tools aligns with that way of working and skill sets, technology can enhance productivity and ultimately improve the experience of customers. We are going to speak um, today about generative AI a few times um, because of the great opportunities that it's opening up to assist in the customer service area. But that potential to help service teams would not be realized if the user experience is not considered properly so that these tools support an employee's way of working. I'm now going to bring in our user experience lead at Box Fusion, Dan, to set the scene and explain what Enterprise UX is and its context for customer service. Over to you, Dan. Thanks, Andy. So today we're here to talk about Enterprise UX, specifically in the context of service. So to recap slightly on what we covered last time, what is Enterprise UX? Well, put simply, Enterprise UX is about designing and delivering applications for employees, people at work who are doing a job. So to put this into the service context, who are these users that we're talking about? Well, really, we're talking about agents in a support center, people who will handle queries, listen to complaints, or take on requests from customers. Those customers might be consumers in the B2C context, or they might be employees from another business in the B2B context. Now, these agents might also be involved in creating content, videos, articles, that kind of thing, um, and maintaining that content so it can be accessed uh, by their customers. So why do we want a great enterprise UX for these agents? Well, really, it's all about empowering them so they have what they need to provide an excellent customer service uh, to whoever it is they're servicing. So what does that look like? Well, for service, there are two key metrics or measurements that we can really use. Those are accuracy and efficiency. So for accuracy, we're talking about enabling our agents to give the right answer the first time. 
So have they correctly understood the incoming ticket? Does it make sense to them? Or can they assign it on to someone who does understand? Can they access the right information and guidance to answer the question? And are they able to then communicate an answer or a resolution back to the customer in a meaningful way? Now, when we move on to efficiency, obviously we're talking about time. Can the agent answer the query in as little time as possible? So we talk about elements like, is the user interface clear? Is it easy to understand? But also, are we making the next step in the process clearly signposted? Are we guiding the agent through the journey? And are we helping them avoid mistakes which might cost time? So if we take all of these things into account, we can empower service center agents to answer queries, solve issues and handle complaints in an accurate and efficient way, leading to a fantastic customer service. Back to you, Andy. Great stuff. Thanks very much, Dan, again, for um, those insights into um, user experience and the, the importance of it when we're, when we're talking about customer service technology. So in this uh, next segment um, of today's um, webinar, we want to move the subject on to specifically B2C customer service. Um, as we've touched on already, there are a, a few similarities between the way that um, you think about user experience in B2B and B2C settings, um, but there are definitely divergences with, with B2C, especially in, the, um, in today's world with the number of variables and um, channels of communication that people have available to them. Um, to help me in this segment, um, I'm pleased to welcome uh, Jake Patterson uh, to join me. Welcome, Jake. Um, maybe if you could just introduce yourself to the, to the audience. Thanks, Andy. Uh, hi, everyone. My name's Jake Patterson. Um, I'm a principal consultant at Box Fusion. Um, I've got about 13 years of experience in uh, CRM and CX and related technologies. Um, and I'm now Box Fusion's conversational AI lead. So in the world of um, B2C customer service today, there is so much that technology can contribute towards a great customer service and great customer experience. Um, today's customer is time poor and um, wants to be met at, their, at the channel of their choice at the time of their choosing. Um, and they want a speedy resolution to their challenge without um, long pauses or delays or incorrect information coming back. Um, but to deliver great customer experience, we uh, also need um, people. So it's people and technology. And so for people to operate well with technology, we need good user experience. But this is nothing new. And if we go back to the mid 90s and when I started out in my career in CRM, so late 90s, um, we were we were basically talking about call centers, large call centers with hundreds and hundreds of agents managing phone calls from customers. That was the only real channel for um, customer service beyond bricks and mortar on the high street. And um, the, the user experience could be influenced in there because what you really wanted to achieve was an integrated telephony and CRM solution. If you didn't have them integrated and agents were working in two different places, it became a clunky experience. If you had them integrated together, um, a call could be routed through to an agent and a screen pop would bring that customer record, all their history in front of the agent there and then as, as the moment that the call gets connected. And that enabled them to deliver a better customer service um, and a, a more pleasant experience all around for the user. Fast forward a little from there, and email became the new favorite channel for customers to engage with businesses and um, having, again, a CRM tool that could cope with email in addition to calls became essential and not having these things coming into different systems and people managing Outlook queues and then jumping back into the CRM and trying to find the customer record, jumping back to emails and searching there. So again, user experience um, is at the heart of delivering that great, um, great customer service for, for the end customer. Um, so J I'm turning to you now, Jake, because I'm keen to get an insight from you as to maybe some thoughts around good user experience um, that, that you've seen in your career so far, um, specifically around customer service and, and CRM. Sure, so um, from the agent perspective, I think there are two uh, main aspects to their role that the user experience can either sort of help or hinder. Um, there's uh, efficiency uh, first, and then second, and I think that we, we sort of 
take this as a given, but is the actually the ability to um, to answer the user's request to provide a solution. Um, to be able to to do that, the agent needs um, information at their fingertips as soon as the uh, interaction comes through with the customer. Um, so they need to make sure that they have accurate, thorough, up-to-date information, and that might be knowledge content to support them. It might be uh, the customer's previous interactions. It might be the, the products or order history uh, that the customer has. Um, so if we can make sure that the agents have all of this information available in one place without digging around through multiple screens or even multiple applications, uh, that what we can do is we can make sure that the agent is able to um, support the customer quickly and efficiently. And that means that the agent then um, feels very productive, uh, is very productive. It means that um, the agent can meet the targets that they might have for the number of calls they, they need to resolve. Um, and it also means that the agent uh, isn't frustrated by not being able to give great customer service as well. Yeah, that, that, that's a good point. And you, and you touched on knowledge in there, which is great. That was something I was going to um, to also introduce here because I, I spoke about um, telephony and email, but then knowledge became um, an essential part of delivering um, a great customer service and either through a self-service knowledge base on a, on a, on a website um, or for, as you said, agents to be able to find answers easily to customers who might be engaging over email or over chat or, um, or on the telephone. Um, but I guess um, one of the problems maybe we've seen is you can have multiple knowledge bases and different silos and different sources of information. I guess it comes back again to having the knowledge base in one place with the rest of your customer data with that? Yeah, exactly. I think that's really important. Um, it's really important that the agent or the customer can access all of that information in one place, even if it comes from multiple sources in the first place. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I guess, so moving on from there on, on this little timeline, fast forwarding very quickly to, I guess, the last four or five years in particular, and, and a theme that you know, I know you've worked, done a lot of work with around uh, messaging. And I guess um, that that messaging and omni-channel solutions that and the importance of bringing those into a CRM has, has really been critical over, um, yeah, let's say, the last five years or so, because that's what customers expect and demand. Um, have you got anything you'd say in terms of user experience again for um, you know, in that in that space? Yeah, definitely. So I think um, I think chat and omni-channel can can offer a number of benefits again both to the customer, but also to the agent. Um, but for the agent, it does add um, sometimes some additional challenges from a user experience perspective, because they might then be dealing with multiple chats at the same time. They may have um, two or three chats simultaneously, whereas when they're on the phone, they would generally only be able to deal with one at a time. So then that increases the need that we have to make sure that the information is easily accessible at their fingertips for each individual um, interaction that they're having at, at any given time. Mm, yeah, perfect. Um, so I guess from from messaging, um, we've we've kind of evolved into um, the the space of generative AI over the last eighteen months, um, and the importance now of that channel for automation and helping um, customers. But I guess there's also scenarios where it can um, provide a, an improved user experience for agents and, and, and doing their job. Um, I was thinking about the sort of implications of um, bad generative AI or a bad implementation of it. And, and in this customer service space, if, you're a, if I'm a customer and I'm on a website and I'm asking a question and I'm getting garbage back or hallucinations, um, I then go through to speak to somebody over a, a different channel and that call center agent's going to get um, a frustrated version of me. So on the other side of that, there's the potential for AI to resolve trivial questions and deflect those away from the agent who can then be left to deal with the more complex and um, tricky situations that may be more bespoke and they can apply their knowledge and their expertise around the product set to help that customer. Maybe that's a bit more of a motivating experience. I don't know if you've would agree with that or whether there's other um, 
I guess, other scenarios where Gen AI can, can help with the, a good user experience? Yeah, definitely. Um, for an agent, generative AI services can help them to handle those more complex um, sort of interactions and more complex requests that you, that you alluded to um, by pulling in, again, knowledge sources, summarizing knowledge from multiple places for the agent so that they don't have to go looking for information. Um, it can also give the agent background on the customer. It could summarize, for example, uh, their previous interactions and help the agent to know when and why that customer has contacted them previously. Um, so there are lots of um, ways like that, that that the generative AI services can, can help an agent as well. Great, yeah, and I think we've got a, a little video that's going to roll now to maybe demonstrate a scenario where um, uh, there's been a long-running chat conversation and then an agent wants to read a summary of that and it's been produced by Gen AI within, within the CRM. Um, again, I suppose that talks to your themes around um, yeah, aiding the, the agent in what they're doing and all in one place um, and helping them provide a better, a better service faster. Yeah, absolutely. It just means the agent doesn't need to go and do that research. They've got it in front of them and they can focus on um, the actual task of, of resolving whatever problem it is that the, that the customer contacted them about. Cool. Fantastic. Thanks for joining me today, Jake. Appreciate it. Good to have you here. In a moment, I'm going to introduce our final speaker for today's event. But before I do that, for those who missed our first Enterprise UX event, we were fortunate enough to be joined by Hillel Cooperman from Oracle. Now, as the person with overall responsibility for Oracle's Redwood UX design framework, he was ideally placed to talk to us about it. And so I'm now going to show a short clip from that session where Hillel talks a bit more about the background and the premise behind Oracle's Enterprise UX work. The way our customers, our shared customers, interact with our, our technology is through the user experience. And I think um, years ago, Oracle realized that there was a gap uh, between sort of the standard user experience for enterprise software and kind of the experience that end users were having um, with consumer software. You know, the, mm -hmm. the experience that they're having on their, their phones, their thousand dollar supercomputers that are in their pockets. And I think there was this sort of um, conceit in enterprise software that, well, enterprise software is more difficult, it's more complicated, the scenarios are more complex, and therefore the software has to be more difficult to use. And I think Oracle was the first company to say, I'm not sure we agree with that. Um, and you know, they invited me to come uh, help um, be a part of a, not just a, a, the invention of a new design system and a new platform, but um, really a cultural change. Um, you don't, and, and that was, that was kind of the premise we discussed. You know, I, I said, look, you don't, you don't deliver something fundamentally different by doing it the same way, just with one, you know, a new person showing up. You, you, the whole company has to change its, its cultural outlook um, in order to change the fundamental output. You know, it's, you're not just putting a new coat of paint on things. Um, and they agreed, much to my um, huh. surprise. Uh, and it, it was one of the most um, delightful things about coming to Oracle that I, this sort of open-mindedness, uh, this growth mindset, this, um, you know, eagerness, th this humility um, that I had uh, not been um anticipating and expecting and found uh to be really refreshing um and um was a great uh, uh fertile ground on which we could grow together and learn how to uh make a great user experience for enterprise software and and, and just to be clear it's not my place to say whether we're achieving this but our aspiration is to make the best technology user experience in the industry period not the best enterprise technology user experience, but the best one, period. So with that backdrop, I now want to introduce our final speaker today, Melinda Ulan, joining us from California, from Oracle, to show us Oracle's Redwood design experience in action in a service environment using a B2B example. And here we'll see that combination of great user experience with the most up-to-date and latest technology innovations. 
Welcome, Melinda. Over to you. Great. Thank you so much, Andy. Hi, my name is Melinda Eulen. I am a Director of Product Management for Oracle Service Center, and today we're going to be looking at the Agent User Experience for Service Center. So let's jump into it. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Great. So I am an agent. I am just starting my day. I've logged into Fusion, and now I want to go ahead and drill into the Service Center application. When I drill into Service Center, I'm going to be presented with the service request list. So this is a list of all of the service requests that are assigned to me. This is driven by Elasticsearch, so it has extremely powerful sorting and filtering capabilities. Everything that's currently assigned to me is under control, so I'm going to remove this filter, and I want to look at any new service requests that have come in. It looks like we have a high priority service request, so I'm going to go ahead and take that one. When I drill into the service request, you'll see that we are now in the service request foldout page. This is based on the Redwood design, and as you can see, it's a very clean, modern user interface. This is what we call a conversational user interface. This foldout panel is designed to really be a cover sheet for the service request providing the agent with all of the information they need to see at a glance. On the left-hand side here, you can see that we have an overview panel. This overview panel is driven by generative AI. The system takes information from the title, the problem description, and all of the inbound and outbound communications on the service request and provides an overview or summary. This allows me to get a quick overview of the issue without having to read through the entire history. So I, first thing I want to do is I want to take ownership of this service request. I'm going to come up here to the action bar. The action bar is a critical element of the Redwood design. From here, I can perform all of the actions that I need to do on the service request. There's about 42 different actions that are available, but the system presents to me the most likely action that I'm going to take based on my previous uh, behavior, as well as where I am in the service request lifecycle. So the first thing I want to do is I want to assign this service request to me. And within just a couple of keystrokes, you can see that it's done a, a lookup for me and presented that action. So I'm going to go ahead and assign this service request to me. And the next thing I want to do is I want to set the status to in progress. So here I'm going to type status again in the action bar. And I'm going to go ahead and update the status from new to in progress. Now when I do that, you can see the information on the header has been updated. And we're all ready to get working on our service request. So looking at the problem description, it looks like our customer is having a problem with the hybrid fuel generator. Let's take a deeper look into this issue. I'm going to drill into what we call um, the activity sub view, which is really your working page for the service request. And this is broken into a couple of different sections. Here you can see I have the problem description available to me, and that's going to be persistent. Below that, we have what we call the activity stream. The activity stream is another key element to the Redwood design. This is a chronological view of all of the key elements that have happened on this service request. Now note, this is not a audit trail. This is a configurable stream of just the key events, so I have the most critical information at my fingertips. So I have this information available to me. I understand the problem. Let's go up to the top here. Now you'll notice in this section, the system is recommending a knowledge article to us. What the system did when I opened the service request is it did an automatic lookup based again on the title, the problem description, the category, and the product of the service request, and is presented to me the most likely solution to this particular issue. This is part of the guided agent experience and how we expose intelligence through the user interface. I'm going to go ahead and drill into this knowledge article. Now, Service Center has a deep integration with knowledge management, which allows for great uh, communication between myself and the rest of the system. When I look through the knowledge article, you can see there's various information about the hybrid fuel pump. 
and it looks like most likely we're going to have to replace the part. I want to share this information with the customer so they have this information at their fingertips as well. I'm going to go ahead and hit share in the knowledge article and you can see that takes me back to my service request with a Compose email presented. Now I'm going to go ahead and select the email channel that I want to send this out on and I can select from any one of a number of email channels that are configured such as support at suprema.com or VIP support at suprema.com. You'll notice that the system has pre-populated this email. Again, using generative AI, this system did a um, analysis of the knowledge article and has created a summary for the customer so that they can just see an overview of the contents of the knowledge article and it has inserted a link to the knowledge article itself. So in just a couple of keystrokes, I'm now ready to send this off to my customer. When the customer receives this, they'll be able to click that link and look at the knowledge article through the customer self-service portal. Now, when I did that, you'll notice that our activity stream has been updated uh, to reflect the email that we just sent out. So, okay, let's go ahead and start working on this problem. Now, before I replace the part, I have a question if it's really necessary. So I want to reach out to a subject matter expert to make sure. Again, I'm going to come up to our action bar, and this time I want to start an internal conversation. An internal conversation is part of our collaboration functionality. This allows me to perform agent to agent and agent to subject matter expert communications in context. There's a variety of different channels available to us. If, for example, the subject matter expert wasn't a Fusion user, I could send them an email. We also have the ability to communicate and collaborate through Microsoft Teams and Slack. For this communication, I'm going to select the Slack channel. And because we already have the integration set up, you'll notice that the workspace is defaulted to Supremo Power. I want to select a channel. So I'm going to come in and select my channel of general billing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say troubleshooting. And now I have selected a Slack channel. From here, I'm going to use what we call Smart Text. And Smart Text allows me to insert a predefined snippet of text. So here, I'm going to insert collaboration request. And again, you can see that it has automatically inserted a predefined snippet of text. This makes it easy for the agent and allows me to respond to issues in a pre-approved terminology. So I'm going to go ahead and send this off to my subject matter expert. Now, when I do that, you'll notice it has updated our activity stream. And when I've done that, um, I'm going to come over here and I want to show you my Slack user interface. In the Slack user interface, you can see that we have a new question that's come in through general troubleshooting. When I select on that, you'll see that we've sent over a predefined series of uh, information metadata from the service request. So the subject matter expert has an overview of the issue that I'm asking for assistance on. If they're a Fusion user, they could even drill directly into the service request using this link. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and say reply to service request. And now I'm going to just say, um, please place part ASAP. AP. We want to make sure that our customers are happy. So I've gone ahead, asked the subject matter expert, and responded to this question. Now we're going to go back over to the Service Center user interface. And again, as we mentioned, this conversation was captured in the activity stream. When I expand this, you'll see now that I have both the original question along with the response from the subject matter expert. Now the key here with our collaboration functionality 
in the past as the support agent, I may have questions, I'd reach out via email, or maybe I would slack a group for um, advice. But now all of that information is captured in context with the service request and has become part of the service request history. So all of that information is captured and nothing is lost. So we have confirmation from our experts that we want to replace the part. So let's go ahead and get started doing that. Once again, I'm going to come up to our action bar. And in this case, I want to add what we call an action plan. So I'm going to um, just add that here. And you see that add an action plan is presented to us. Action plans are predefined processes. It's a series of steps that are predefined. They can be very simple or they can be very complex. But again, this is another way that we can help guide the agent through the predefined processes that are necessary. In this case, I'm going to select immediate parts replacement. And you'll see that the action plan has been saved to my service request. Now, when I did that, you'll notice that the recommended knowledge has now been replaced by this gold box here. This is the next logical step or next best action for the agent or for others in completion of this service request. This is the first step in the action plan that we just executed. Now, I could go off and say that I've already completed this and mark it as complete. When I do that, the next logical step would be presented to me or whoever is assigned to that particular step in the process. Let me go ahead and show you the action plan that we just added to this service request. So again, I'm going to come to my action bar and this time I'm going to say show actions and plans. When I do that, you'll see that the action plan has brought up a graphical representation of the plan that we just associated to the service request. We started here, and then the next step is to check the warranty. Now the warranty here, you can tell by the little wrench, is actually a child service request that was automatically created, associated to this service request, and assigned off to another group. The step following that actually uses dynamic processes that as soon as this step in the plan was completed, it would kick off a dynamic process for approval to replace the part. Then finally, notify the customer and ship the part off. So again, these action plans can be very simple or they can be extremely complicated depending on your business needs. So now that we've gone ahead and got that kicked off, the next thing we need to do is we need to update the customer to let them know what's going on. I'm again going to come to my action bar. And this time, I want to compose an email. So again, our email compose has been presented to us. I'm going to select my email channel. And this time, I'm going to use smart text again and say we're replacing the part. When I use this smart text, you can see that it's inserting a fully completed uh, email to the customer. Now, the beautiful thing about smart text is you have the ability when you define a smart text to use variable substitution. That allows me to insert the service request ID number and the title for this service request. This allows me to utilize these smart text again and again across all of my service requests. So again, we just used a couple of keystrokes and I'm gonna send this off to the customer. So we've evaluated the problem. We've checked the knowledge, sent it off to our customer. We collaborated with our experts to ensure the next best step. And we've kicked off the process to replace the part for our customer. At this point, the customer is gonna be very happy with both our brand and with our service. So from my perspective as an agent, I'm done. The last thing I need to do is I need to come up here and now I'm going to resolve my service request. So our last action from our action bar, I type a couple of letters and I'm going to resolve my service request. When I come in here, I'm going to select the outcome and just say solution provided. 
Um, we went ahead and sent a knowledge article, so I'm going to indicate that as well. And we're going to use one more um, one more smart text to insert a resolution to our service request, and I'm going to hit resolve. When I do that, you'll see that our act activity stream has been updated and all of the information regarding this service request has been captured. As an agent, my job here is completed and I'm able to close this service request and move on to the next step in my day. So thank you so much for allowing me to show you the Service Center agent experience. And with that, Andy, I'll turn it back over to you. Thanks so much, Melinda. That was fantastic and really great to see um, a demo and a, a nice way to wrap up, I think, today's, today's session. Hopefully um, everybody was able to take away from that that um, Oracle's invested a lot in great user experience and the Redwood design patterns. And hopefully this, this session's helped to showcase some of what that great user experience can mean for customer service teams. Um, that's, that's the end of today's session. Um, please do follow up with us um, via any of the links on the screen. Um, we really look forward to engaging with you further in the future. Thanks for joining us.